everybody! Welcome to day, today's live at five with me. As you're jumping on, please do say hello. Let me know you're here, or if you're catching the replay, then do hashtag replay so that we know that you have watched it. And of course, I'll come back and pick up any questions that come along after this live if I have missed them. So for those of you that are joining us, we've had a few more people come in and I know some people have been catching up and haven't been able to get started yet. So for those of you that are new to this, my name is Louisa Havers. I'm a transformational life and business coach. I'm an advanced pranic healer and an energy alignment mentor. And I'm the creator of Your Passion Life, Soulful Business Mastery and the creator of the Energetic Self Mastery Workshop Series, which you are taking part in this week and it's so wonderful to have you here so thank you so much for joining us and wow it's just been amazing yesterday was fantastic the shifts people have been having have been phenomenal and I hope you all managed to catch Louise's hot seat with me which we ended up holding on zoom where we dived into releasing financial roller coaster patterns and clearing generational patterns so it was a powerful session and thank you so much Louise for being so open and sharing with us all. Now today is all about the feels and the work to do was to find out about your emotional set point when thinking about the area that you want to improve in your life and clearing the current level and then raising the frequency and the new emotional set point because it's this set point that you are vibrating out into the universe. This is the carrier wave that you're sending out and attracting back to you. So if you're tuning into this for the first time on these lives, what I do is I'm answering all the questions that you've been posting in the group. And if you're just getting started, you'll find your pre-challenge training and the day one and day two training in the unit section of the group. And of course, if you've got any problems finding anything, then please do send a message to our community manager, Sophie Mason or myself, and we will get that all sorted for you. Hi Emma, hi Dawn, good to see everybody jumping on here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to answer the questions that have come up today. So as ever I've got lots of screens open to make sure that I've got the questions up and I can see if any more pop in <laughs> as we are on live. And then what I want to do is I'm going to, after I've answered all the questions that have come through so far, is then I'm going to guide you through a tuning into your intuition and up-leveling your vibration exercise. How does that sound? Okay, fab stuff. So I'm going to come to the questions that I have spotted so far. And this, these are, I'm looking at the post, day three post. Hi Kerry, hi Natalie. So Jane asked in the post under the day three video, she said she's not able to read the energy alignment emotional scale, it's a bit blurry. So I didn't know if anybody else had this issue. So I've actually just expanded it in the document. So I hope that you can see it there. What I will do is I'm just going to grab it here and just talk through what the emotions are in case anyone else is missing, missing one. Okay, so on the left hand side, you have all the lower frequency emotions, the emotions that are going to be attracting things that you don't want in life. So we've got feelings of feeling like being a victim, feelings of powerlessness, depression, grief, fear, unworthiness, guilt, insecurity, jealousy, hatred, rage, revenge, anger, discouragement, blame, worry, doubt, disappointment, overwhelmment. I know this is a big one for a lot of people if they're feeling burnt out. Frustration, irritation, impatience, pessimism and boredom. So those are all the lower frequency emotions that we all experience from time to time in our lives. What we want to be removing is any embedded frequencies that we're not aware of that are attracting more of that into our life. And then on the other side of the scale, we have the positive frequencies that we want to align to. So these are the feelings and the emotions that we'll be drawing in when we're doing a step five. So we have contentment, hopefulness, 
optimism, that positive expectation, the energy of that expectation of positivity, things going well, enthusiasm, passion. And then right at the top, we have appreciation, love, freedom, empowerment, knowledge, joy. And that is what being in flow is. So that's what we want to get our vibration up to as consistently as possible to be in that energy of flow at all times. Hi Jane, hope you're all well. Lots of love to you all. Hope Lainey's enjoying this as well. Okay, so I hope that clarifies what those emotions are on the emotional scale. And as I said, I've expanded the picture in the document, so I hope everybody can read it now. Um, let me know if there's any problems with seeing that and we will get that, get that all sorted. Okay, so then the other question that Jane had was around, she said, please could you give an explanation around mirrors or magnets with us and tell us how to release the mirror agitation. I get annoyed, agitated and sometimes angry just being in my mum's presence and I feel really so guilty and horrid because she's actually a really sweet woman with a kind soul. So any advice, welcome. So just in terms of mirrors and magnets to explain this, and this may be a question that other people had as well, so mirrors, if you think of mirrors in your life as reflections of yourself, this can be reflections of your own behaviour, your own frequency, so something's matching up to your frequency, or it's offering a mirror and a reflection of something that needs to be healed in yourself. Magnets, I want you to think of magnets as your frequency and vibration, and that's what you're attracting to you. So. If you think of your aura like a big magnet, <laughs> drawing to you things that you are in resonance with, in, in resonance with your frequency. And which is, this is why this work is so powerful, because we can change all the things that we know we need to change. But there's also so much we don't know that is holding us back in our subconscious. And that's what I love about doing energy work is because you're able to dig into the subconscious, tune in energetically and find out what is in your aura that is holding you back, what those frequencies are. There, You may have heard me talk about this before actually thinking about it, but I, I'll just quickly explain it again because I think this really helps people understand. And if you're musical, then this will really resonate. So has anybody heard of the tuning fork experiment? Now, what I mean by this is when some physicists did this in a lab. I mean, you can look it up on YouTube if you do, literally search tuning fork experiment um, and we can find a copy and post it in the group if that would be helpful. But essentially it is you have two tuning forks and they're both at the same frequency. So let's say tuning fork A, the A tone, and then tuning fork over here, B, is also at the A tone. So if someone comes along and then it's sort of next door to each other and hits tuning fork A over here, which is the A note tone, this one over here, because it's also A tone, will start vibrating because it's in resonance with this first one. Okay, so although it wasn't hit, the frequency and the vibration of this one being hit because it's in the, it matches it, this one um, starts vibrating. And making a sound. Now if you do the same experiment again but you have tuning forks with a different tone so let's say this is A tone and this is C tone and you were to come along and hit tuning fork A which is A tone this one isn't going to start making a sound because it's not in resonance it's not at the same frequency. So you'll often hear people talk about well I'd like you to think about yourself being the tuning fork this may help with a visual sort of representation, is you want to raise your vibration to be in resonance with what you want to attract. So think of yourself with that tuning fork. And if you don't see in your life around you what it is that you want to have in your life, it's because you're on a different tuning fork frequency to what you want to create, have, experience, receive, etc. Does that make sense? So that in terms of you want to raise your frequency, raise your vibration so that you're in resonance what you want to attract. And that's when the, if you think of yourself like a magnet, you're then going to be attracting that because it's on the same frequency, same magnetism. 
Does that make sense? I hope that helps explain it for Jane and anybody else that was just wanting a little bit more clarity around mirrors and magnets and frequencies and vibrations. Now, Jane was asking in relation to the mirrors and magnets around what, how can she release feeling annoyed, agitated and sometimes angry in her mum's presence. So I had actually a couple of questions for you, Jane. What is it that annoys you about your mum? And you can ask your energy, is it that that you do yourself and it's annoying you because you see a reflection of yourself in your mum? Secondly, you could ask, actually, are you addicted to feeling guilty and feeling horrid? And are you creating situations so that you can put yourself in that situation? Does that make sense? So a couple of questions there for you. If, for example, say it's something that your mum's doing that's annoying you. So it could be she gossips about other people, just for example, or she's really messy and it really annoys you. You can ask your energy, uh, is what I'm seeing in my mum a reflection of me? So is the mess that I see in my mum a reflection of what, I, what I'm holding in my energy? A reflection of me that I am really messy? Is a reflection, is what I'm seeing in my mum gossiping about others? A reflection of what I'm doing and ask your energy and your energy will tell you yes or no if then it is a reflection what you can do is I'm ready to release this reflection of me that I see in my mum gossiping this reflection of me that I see in my mum being really messy whatever it might be I release that from my energy in all forms on all levels at all points in time and then the step five would be aligning to whatever it is that you want to be holding in your own vibration. So you're changing the energy in yourself rather than focusing on what the other person is doing, is or isn't doing. I hope that makes sense and helps in terms of clearing where you see reflections and mirrors in other people. Okay. So Candy saying yes, that helps. Fantastic. Kerry saying, so if you have a high positive frequency and a negative frequency, how do you stay strong not to be dragged down? If this is an individual in your life, does that make sense? Yes, this came up yesterday, actually, Kerry. We were talking about how you hold your vibration high. So there's a couple of things that you can do. So if, if this is a family member, that's someone that you live with at home, then let me know. And there's a couple of things you can do anyway. So in terms of obviously doing your energy work all the time, because there'll be something in you that wants to come out. And I do my energy work all the time as well. We're never done. <laughs> energy is always moving. So that's the first thing, always doing your energy work daily. The second thing is to imagine yourself, your aura is like a bubble of light, bright, electric, white light. And you can imagine that it's like a balloon case around it so that anything that's coming through just bounces off it and doesn't come through into your personal energy field. The other thing that it may well be in terms of is where do you allow yourself to be dragged down so that you're putting yourself into a victim position. So am I a victim in this relationship and therefore you can change the dynamic there by changing you showing up as the victim and feeling like it's their fault, not your fault, and changing that. So I would ask, am I in my victim energy when I think about this person? And if you get a yes, so I'm ready to release being in a victim energy when I'm with so-and-so, my mum, my dad, my partner, my children, my boss, whoever it might be. I release that from my energy in all forms, on all levels, at all points in time. And when there's victim energy as well, often we, because we're blaming, we're pointing the finger at the other person as well, we're saying we're the victim and it's their fault. We're also persecuting them or pushing energy on, pushing our energy onto them, saying it's their fault, blaming them. So you could ask, am I in pusher energy or blaming energy when I'm with this person x y and z and if yes I'm ready to release anywhere and everywhere that I am in my pusher energy with my husband wife 
daughter, son, in-laws, <laughs> bosses, whoever it might be. I release that from my energy in all forms and all levels at all points in time. So a couple of things there that you can do to help with raising your vibration, not being affected by others, but also taking responsibility for what you can do, guarding your energy, expanding your vibration is the best thing you can do for yourself, for your family, your work colleagues, for everybody and for the planet. It really is for the collective. So I hope that helps. Oh, Jane's saying I love that. That's fantastic. And Kerry's saying, oh, great. That's just come through. That makes sense. Fab, fab, fab. So I've had a couple of messages as well around people feeling burnt out, not enough time, feeling like there's a lack of support. And so some things you can do, and it's very timely with the work that we're doing today around the emotional scale, is if you're feeling burnt out, I want you to release feeling overwhelmed. So ask if you're feeling overwhelmed. And also to release the fear of asking for support. And release the resistance for asking for support. So the fear and the resistance. The reason why I'm saying this is you are a child of God, of the universe. You are fully supported. You just need to allow it in. And I think often as women and the gentlemen in here, you can chime in with this. And I'd love to hear your perspective on this as well. But in this day and age... Women need to be mums, the businesswoman. We need to be everything, absolutely everything, and it can feel completely overwhelming. And we need to be independent, to bring in our own money, etc. And then we have this sort of push-pull with dynamics and relationships. If we haven't got enough money, what's the relationship with the husband if we have to ask for money from, for him, from him? And I know... The dynamics are very different. Some people, some partners have very separate bank accounts. Some pull them together. And what is the energy around that in terms of feeling supported and feeling independent? So do you feel that you can be independent and be supported? Or if you are independent, you're not allowed to allow support in? Does that make sense? And if that's the case, then you can release that resistance to being supported and being independent. Also, what is the feeling? What do you feel like you're giving up if you are supported? That's another way you can sort of journal out the question and see what is coming up for yourself there. Some other people have mentioned around their finances not being where they want it to be. What I would love you to do is to switch your attention to what's coming in rather than what's going out. Obviously, you need to attend to what's going out so you know where your bills are, etc., but I want you to spend each day switching your attention to what is coming in and feeling really grateful for that. Whatever the amount is, whether it's a pound, a thousand pounds, we're going to have gratitude for it. Really, really key. So I want you to write down each day what's coming in and celebrate it with a big step five. So grateful for the penny that you might find in the street, whether it's a voucher on the side of a dishwasher tablet box whether it's the thinking about the the bill that you've received and the kind lady that has taken the time to press all the buttons on the commuter to send the bill in to let you know about the money that you've borrowed so that you could do the thing that you want to do and you might be paying interest on using that service now but that's that interest is going in and being able to enable that company to contribute to the economy to provide jobs for people for those people to have food on their table to be able to go on holidays. So I really want you to move into that energy of being heart-centered with where your money is going, sending it out, out with love and receiving it with love back in. Does that make sense? Okay, fab stuff. Let me know if there's any questions in relation to that. I'm just going to have a little look to see if anything else has come up. Oh, Natalie's saying, I'm loving all of this completely. I was quite surprised at the result of the negative emotions towards myself and changing my health, life and body. I'm now at the highest vibrational feeling of love. My heart was swelling while doing step five and I was beaming like a Cheshire cat by the end. Yay! That's fantastic. I'm so excited to hear that. Okay, so some comments have come in. Let's just have a little check. Oh, Natalie, I was just reading out your other comment there. 
C, frequency. Okay, so when it comes to business and healing people, how can you stop taking on other people's issues and problems? I have a Reiki business and lots of people seem to want counselling and I don't know how to help them. So a couple of practical things, Natalie, is how, what are people's expectations when they come for Reiki? Do you have any sort of something to support your boundaries as in here's what to expect from the session and clearly saying this is not a counselling session and if you need counselling then here are the people that I would recommend. That is how I would do that so you can from a physical perspective signpost them but also in your energy you can just check in are you holding any rescuer energy and you can clear that Does that make sense? So just ask in terms of, am I holding any rescuer energy or any victim energy? So some of the things I've been talking about today, so with these archetypes, patterns, you may, if you've done any psychology training or um, sociology, I might have come up in sociology as well, but I first learned about the drama triangle when I did my psychology degree, long time ago now. <laughs> Um, and they talk about this pattern of behaviours that we can find ourselves in in any relationships at any one point in time. A great example to, to help you understand this is really like if you think about EastEnders or any of those soap operas, what do you see in the relationship patterns that play out in there? They are a drama triangle. You have somebody who is a victim it's poor me, everything terrible is happening to me, why are they doing it to me? I didn't ask for this. So they are also blaming someone else. Then you have the persecutor who's like, it's all your fault, it's not my fault. Why can't you be like this? And they're pointing the finger and, and blaming everybody else and they think they're, often think they're the magnificent. <laughs> and often you can see that role play out with narcissists or people in emotional abusive relationships as well. And then you have the rescuer. So this is the type of person that is wanting to help everybody and doesn't like to say and put boundaries around what they're able to offer. So I don't know if this resonates. You can swear on it to see if this is in your energy or not. Um, but I thought I would use it to, to share this with people so you can see if this is relevant for you or other people that you know. So rescuing people. So you're trying to bring the victim and the persecutor together. To make it all okay and of course you get absolutely no thanks for it <laughs> and then you go back into being a victim and I know in my life certainly when I was a lot younger I was a massive victim and rescuer that was my preferred pattern and point of attraction so what did I attract to me all those types of relationship patterns so that was the mirrors going on again mirrors and magnets going on so let me know if that helps Candy saying I'm such a rescuer. You can let it go, Candy. Move into so the step five for letting go of any um, of the rescuer, persecutor, and victim patterns would be having open and empowered communication with people. Heart-centered, empowered communication. So I'm ready to allow myself to have heart-centered, empowered open loving communication with xyz whoever it might be i allow this into my energy in all forms on all levels at all points in time so i hope that helps give you an idea of what you could do as a step five so candy saying so true not necessarily money but just demands on me just don't feel like i'm doing the best for anyone or certainly not what they want me to be doing oh i'm glad you've had some insight there candy so it's time to let the rescue go and to move into your empowered self Hi Ginny, Ginny say just made it. You did, you made it. <laughs> so are there any other questions? And if not, I will guide us through this tuning up of your vibration and tuning into your intuition. Okay, I can't see any more. Okay, so fab stuff. What I wanted to do is I want to guide you through tuning into the frequency of gratitude with heart-centered breathing. So I shared the heart-centered breathing technique on Monday.
to help you have magnificent step fives and that's so that you can tune into your heart energy. So what we're going to do is tune into your heart energy now and your intuition to magnetize your vibration. And so this will allow you to tap into what action is in your highest interest to take next. Because I found that, you know, when you live in the question of how can I and you don't actually try and answer it, what happens is it allows it to come to you. The answer comes to you through synchronicities, through opportunities, through ideas. So you're li- when you're living in that how can I, your energy is expanded rather than contracted. And the contraction might be, well, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z. Whenever you tell yourself you can't do it. So are you up for tuning in with me now? So what I'd like you to do is to place your hands on your heart. To physically breathe deep into your heart. And as you're breathing deep into your heart, I want you to close your eyes and to notice and to feel the strength of your heart. Feel the power of your heart. Feel the beauty of your amazing heart. What are you proud of or grateful for that your heart has guided you to do or to give or to feel or to enjoy and breathe into your heart space and feel the blood flow the oxygen and feel grateful for your heart first your wonderful strong heart that was given to you as you were created. You didn't do anything to earn this heart. You didn't have to prove yourself, accomplish anything. Something loved you enough to give you the gift of life. As long as this heart of yours is beating, You have that gift. You live. Feel the preciousness of this gift as you breathe in your heart. Feeling your powerful heart. And I want you, just for a moment, to think of three things that you are grateful for. And we're going to do this just one at a time. So think first of one event in your life, one experience, one moment that you could feel so grateful for if you wanted to. Recall a magic moment, a sacred moment, a beautiful moment, a loving moment, any moment that you feel grateful for. Now I invite you to step into that memory for a minute. Step in your body as if you were there. See what you would have solved as if you were there. Hear what you'd hear back there. Fill yourself up with that sense of gratitude for that moment. How do you smile when you feel so grateful or thankful? What's that look in your eyes? How do you breathe? Let's look in your face when you feel really, really grateful. What do you see? Just fill it out. Fill up with gratitude can't be fearful and angry at the same time as you are filled up with gratitude. 
And now think for a second moment that you could feel truly grateful for. And again, breathe deep in your heart. Feel that power. Just think of any other moment. It could be in your childhood, your adulthood. It could be last week, it could be today. It could be 10 years ago. Any moment that you just truly feel like that was magical, that was beautiful. That's magnificent. Something that gives you the feeling of tremendous gratitude if you really focused on it. Breathe it in. Feel it. Enjoy it. Fill up with gratitude. And then finally, think of a third moment that you can feel truly grateful for and step into it. See it. Feel it. Be there. Feel the good. What were you so grateful for? What are you so grateful for? Now I want you to think of a coincidence. We all love when life happens for us and not to us. We love coincidences because we didn't do anything. Something happened for us. You were going to do one thing and then you met somebody that you then developed a partnership with or they became a friend, a business partner, a lover, a husband, a wife. All the business opportunities just all came from a coincidence. Or an insight comes from a coincidence that's been so valuable in your life and it's something that you are so grateful for. What's the coincidence that led to something that you're so grateful for? Feel the gratitude for that. Was it a coincidence or were you guided? Now, as you breathe in your heart, you've been doing this for a couple of minutes. I want you to keep doing your heart centered breathing. Keep feeling it, feeling grateful. And let's use this state to change the state of the area that you are working on. So the easy way to do that is to keep breathing your heart-centered breathing. Stay out of your head, stay in your heart and think of that situation, this part of your life that has stressed you out Keep breathing this beautiful gratitude state, this feeling, and ask yourself this question. Ask yourself if all I need to focus on in this situation, all I need to focus on, all I need to remember is what? Your heart knows. So all I need to focus on. All I need to remember, all I need to do in this situation is what? Your heart knows what to do. And as you're in this gratitude state, you can take a moment to capture any thoughts. The key is to stay in this amazing gratitude state and to allow the insights to come to you. Now the answers may not come immediately. I want you to be open to the ideas dropping in over the next few days, maybe even a few weeks. The synchronicities, those little nudges, that little voice from within, 
the coincidences. Pay attention to those because they are the answer. And if you're joining us as we've been going through this heart-centred breathing exercise and tuning in to our intuition and raising our vibration to the feeling of gratitude, you've probably been thinking, what has been going on? Because normally the pace is a lot quicker. So I've been answering questions and then we've shared this moment together. So I invite you, if you've missed it, to go back and watch the, the replay and join in with us. I'll come and see if there's any other questions here before. So Stephanie's saying, hubby's still not okay. Today did not do your day three work, but it's only 9.30. You'll get it done. Yes, Stephanie, you will. I love it. Give us a shout out when you've done it. I love your commitment. That is how you make change happen. And hi, Vivian. So glad you joined us as well. So thank you so much for sharing your evening with me and for all your questions. I will pop back in the group and make sure that I haven't missed any. Tomorrow we are working with your head, your heart and your hara and working with the universal laws and your task as ever will be shared at 8am UK time and then I'll be going live again at 5pm UK time. So post your questions as they come up for you under the relevant thread. And we will get all your all your questions answered. And if mm. there's nothing else from questions that have come up from today, I will hop off. I know I'm going to catch up with a few people who have messaged, direct messaged me, so I will check in with you guys as well. Ah, oh, Stephanie's saying, I'm so glad I came in before that heart space meditation. Ah, oh, Stephanie, that thank you for sharing that. I hope I hope you enjoyed that. It's a powerful one to do when you really tune in and I'm really excited to see what unfolds for everybody who has done that exercise. So thank you so much. Stephanie's got an answer. Boom! At first you had nothing but you got an answer. Candy saying thank you. Loved that. My shoulder's a lot less painful. It's my place of pain. Yes! Stephanie's saying, wait, it's coming. Okay, we're waiting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so has anybody, how was that for everybody else? Any other insights? Memories that they weren't expecting to be grateful for that dropped in? Those words popped into my head after a moment. So was it, wait, it's coming, those words popped into my head after a moment. <laughs> I thought you were saying, wait, don't go anywhere. <laughs> it's coming. I love it. The solution is in, the heart knows the answer. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, not sure what next to do, do some heart-centered breathing. It will really calm you down. Think of something you're grateful for. So you can tune into that. Know that your heart knows. Your heart tuned into the higher intelligence will give you the answer. So Stephanie's saying, no, these are the words, so it's coming, <laughs> were the words. Oh, fantastic, it is coming. I love it, I love it, I love it. You've got your answer. That now makes sense <laughs> with what you've been talking about, Stephanie. Oh, I love it, I'm so excited. So do let me know how that all goes for you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I will keep my eyes out in the groups and will be responding to some of the DMs that I've received as well. And I will see you all tomorrow evening at 5pm UK time again. And sending you loads and loads of love. I hope you have a fabulous evening and enjoy doing this energy work. Please do not hold back with asking questions. That's what we're here for. There is no such thing as a silly question. I want to keep you all moving forward and raising your vibration and your magnetism so you can create what you want in life. Sending you loads and loads of love. Take care. Bye bye.